What's going on everyone? My name is Derek. Welcome to my channel Euro Superbike Life. Today we are working on my track BMW S1000 Double R. We're going to do a leak down test right after this. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. So if you remember in the last episode, we did a compression test on my S1000 Double R. And we did that because it has 23,000 miles on it. It's a track bike. And I know the engine is probably starting to get a little worn. So we want to make sure that it's okay before we add power mods and, you know, start tuning it on the dyno for big power and things of that nature. Maybe uh, some race fuel or something like that. But um, anyway, we did a couple of tests and our initial test was really, really low. If you remember, I had 90 PSI across the board and I was freaking out. Uh, and that was the cheap Harbor Freight compression test tool. Well, then I went and purchased a quality professional uh, Midivac compression test tool and compression went back up to where it's supposed to be. I'm 150 across the board. So today I am doing a leak down test to further make sure that uh, the engine is okay. Now the difference between a compression test and a leak down test is that a compression test measures how well your engine can produce pressure. Very simple, it's a, it's a big air pump, so you crank it over a few times, it builds pressure, and it tells you how well it's building pressure. If it's not building pressure at all, then you got a leaky head gasket, leaky valves, a leaky something. You don't really know, but something is leaking. On the other hand, a leak down test measures how well your engine can hold pressure. So you don't build any pressure. We uh, provide air pressure via the big ass uh, cobalt uh, 60 gallon uh, air tank over there. And we provide the air and we pressurize the cylinder uh, combustion chamber uh, and we measure how much leakage we get and it's represented in a percentage. And that lets us further know uh, how well our engine is doing. In addition, it will also tell us uh, if we have a really bad leak where it's coming from because if you hear air coming out your exhaust, then you know you probably got an uh, exhaust valve leak. If you hear air coming out of the intake, you got probably got an intake leak. Or if you hear air coming out of the, uh, uh, the radiator, you probably got a head gasket leak. So uh, leak down a little, bit more, um, a little bit more detailed in what it can tell you about your engine. So uh, without further ado, let me come on over here, show you what I got for my leak down tester, then we'll go and test it on the bike. Okay, so here we have my Lang leak down test tool. It's a dual gauge. Uh, comes with everything you need. So you got two, ga two gauges, um, you got a line, which I already have, and then they give you an adapter back here. Uh, and what's, a couple adapters actually, and some instructions. So your first gauge reads uh, PSI for air coming into the system. So you have a line that connects to here from your, if you have, like me, a big uh, um, air pump over there, air compressor, excuse me. And the first gauge reads PSI. So that's how much air is coming in. And then the second gauge reads uh, how much is leaking. And it represents that in percentages. So what you basically do is you get your air hose, you connect it to here, you turn your adjustment knob all the way until this needle reaches zero. Then you plug in your line that's already been threaded to your, um, your combustion chamber uh, spark plug socket connect it to here and then it'll give you a reading and as you can see that first area says set then you got a green area which means good that's low leakage then you got a yellow area that says moderate that's uh, moderate leakage and then the red area which is always bad that means you got high leakage and then basically the process is very similar to what we did on the compression test only this time we have to find top dead center on each of the cylinders which isn't easy because all four cylinders aren't always at top dead center. Um, so we have to figure out how to do that. So BMW has uh, provided some tools. So you can order these tools here online or from your local BMW dealer. And one tool, oh man, no light, no light, hold on. Here we go. So here you have a, a screw here. And if you remove this, you can screw the tool into there. And then I remove the timing cover. There's a little plug that goes here. And you simply remove that. And there are some marks in there. And basically, you crank this over by hand. The big ratchet and socket. You crank this over by hand until those dots line up. And until that tool is flush, 
and then you're at top dead center most likely for the number one cylinder. And you'll continue to do that uh, across all four cylinders. So right now I'm top dead center on the number one cylinder. I already have my hose uh, screwed in here. So we are just about set. So let me put the camera back on the tripod and we'll do a leak down test on cylinder number one. All right guys, so we're over here at the bike and I have my lane gauges all ready to go. I have my line threaded into cylinder number one. And remember when I mentioned earlier that we have to find top dead center. That is true, we still have to do that, but we have to find top dead center on the compression stroke. That means the piston within the combustion chamber is at its highest point and both intake and exhaust valves are closed. Um, if we find top dead center that's not on the compression stroke, then either the intake or the exhaust valve, or possibly both of them, who knows, uh, will be open and you'll immediately, uh, once you connect these gauges, this gauge over here, this needle over here, will automatically jump to red. So unless your engine is really, really worn, that is a very good indicator that you have not found top dead center. All right? So I got my line. I have my uh, air compressor over there uh, set at between 100 and 150 PSI, according to the manual. So basically all we want to do here is we want to turn our adjustment knob all the way clock, uh, counterclockwise. Then we hook up our airline. And then we rotate this all the way until the needle over here gets to zero. While this gauge here will read the incoming PSI from our compressor. And like I said, I think mine is set at 150 PSI, so it'll go past 100 here. So I'm right about right there, I'm about 100 or zero over here on this gauge. And I'm over here, I'm, I'm past 100. So like I said, I'm about 150-ish PSI. So now all I have to do is connect this line here to our connector here. And this will read how much leakage we're getting. So there we are. Um, so this gauge is reading just below 20%. I'm well within the green. I'm, I'm probably about between 17 and 19%, depending on, they don't have those really small markers. So I'm below 20%, I'm within the green. So I'm really, really good uh, on cylinder number one. And the process is the same with the other four cylinders. So you'll find top dead center on the compression stroke as you move across and you'll do the same thing. Now I've already done the other three cylinders and all, uh, all four cylinders are about this mark. They're, they're just below or right in the 20% the leakage range. Now, if I was up here in the yellow area, moderate, then we might want to investigate where air is leaking from, whether it's an intake valve, exhaust valve, head gasket, rings, what have you, um, so to better understand what we need to repair. Uh, if it's up in the red area, then I'm probably just going to do a complete rebuild that it really doesn't make any difference where it's leaking. I'm going to tear this thing down from the beginning. Uh, all the way down to bare bones and rebuild the whole thing. Uh, but seeing we're in the green, we are good to go. So my compression is good across all four cylinders and my leak down test has proved that uh, we, have, we can hold pressure pretty well on all four uh, cylinders and combustion chambers as well. So I'll disconnect that and that. So what we can do now is we can put this all back together. I'm gonna take the bike uh, back down to Colin at uh, Rapato Veloce down in uh, Chandler, Arizona. And we are going to do a proper tune and map on this bike. So with our alpha uh, flashed ECU here, we flashed it with the RC2K, uh, RCK2, excuse me, uh, software so that it can add launch control, um, uh, pit lane speed limiter, I can fine tune uh, engine braking and some other things, but we don't have a map right. So right now it's running super rich because there's no advance on any of the uh, ignition uh, table settings um, and the fuel settings are way off. So it's running super rich, it's down on power. Um, so we're gonna go and get it tuned, uh, get a proper map on this and we should see, I'm hoping 190-ish at the rear wheel, maybe, we'll see, I don't know, but more than we have right now. But I'm gonna call that a wrap for this video real quick, real simple, real easy. Uh, you guys know the drill, like, comment, subscribe, or smash it if you didn't. Uh, hope you, hopefully you found this video useful. And um, yeah, but I'm Derek, this is your Superbike Life. Until next time guys, take care.